Alright, so this is a tutorial for SLX Studio on how to create an SLX project for a building. And right here you can see I already have a building provided to me. So what I'm going to do first is drop this frame right into SLX Studio. And here, if we click here, we can see our frame. Now if you watched the last tutorial video, uh, this version is quite a bit improved since the last one and right now I have all these new icons that you can see here alright so the first thing we want to do is to set our anchor point uh, right now our anchor point is right about here if we view our anchor point here you can see it there uh, we want to position it in the middle of this building one thing in SLX Studio that you can do is you can double click an image to instantly get an anchor point. So uh, we want our anchor point to be somewhere right about here. Okay, but still it's a little hard to tell where exactly that is. So we're going to go to view, selection box, and we are going to choose 3x3 three three for this particular building. And here we can get a better idea of where it would lie in the game. I think mine was pretty pretty close. I'm gonna go down a little bit. And I think the space in between here and here is about right. This looks about right in the middle. So that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna click apply. Okay, so we set our anchor point. Uh, the next thing you would do, although in this case this was already done with this image, you would apply your color palette. So you go in the tools, and then you click this option here to apply color palettes. And you have many color palettes to choose from in this list, or you can load your own custom one. But uh, I'll just go ahead and do this again just to show you what it does. Okay, so now that we've set our anchor point, we can go ahead and we can turn this selection box off. We don't need to see that. Uh, we can also zoom in a little bit so we can get a better view. Uh, what we're going to do next is go into Generate Data Graphics. Okay, so in this tool, uh, we first need to make sure our colors are set. Uh, for the background, I have pure magenta, and so that's already there, that's default. So it looks good, we have it on. Uh, for shadow, my shadows are pure red and we want to make sure that zero tolerance because we don't want to accidentally get any of these orange pixels in here okay we have that on um, for buildings the shadows are actually separate SLP files they're a different layer than the actual building is so what we're going to do is separate the shadow and create its own shadow SLX file and what this will do is it'll create a folder in your project folder called shadow and your SLX file will go in there and it'll have this suffix in the name. Okay, so we have that on. Uh, this is a new addition uh, for SLX Studio. We now have two player colors to choose from to help detect all the player colors in your image. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and make use of this. We have a lot of darker colors, so I'm going to go ahead and choose this one. And we have kind of a medium color, so I'm going to go ahead and choose this one here. And we need to enable it, and our tolerance is set to 50. I'm just going to go ahead and leave that there. Um, emit grays, we want to leave that on because we don't want to accidentally get any of these grays in here. Okay, uh, buildings do not have any outlines, so when you are making buildings, remember to leave this option off. Um, we do want to auto crop this image to get rid of all this excess space here around the edges. And we have our color palette, I'll just go ahead and leave that on. And let's go ahead and preview. Okay, so here is our image and 
to the right, we can see our data image. And it looks like they did a pretty good job getting all these player colors. So that looks pretty good. And we can also see here is our shadow as a separate SLX file. So everything looks pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and apply to selected and close out of this. Okay, so we forgot to save it as a SLX project, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Um, we got FO Shield Tech 4, and let me save that into my folder. Uh, let's zoom back out. And everything here is ready. We can go ahead now and create an SLP. So we're going to export this SLX project to an SLP file and we want to use the standard 8-bit. Okay, so I'm going to save and close into this. Okay, the only other thing we have not done yet is made an SLP out of this uh, S Shadow SLX file. So what we can do, since everything's already done for us, the anchor points already set, uh, we just export this to SLP. We want a standard SLP. And the thing is I need to put a 4 there. And there we go. We have our shadow SLP. Okay, so we can go ahead and view each of these. So here's our, here's our shield generator. And here's without the mask. And here's the shadow. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open the Delta Object Positioner tool. Alright, so what we're going to do in this tool is first we're going to select some Delta objects that this building would have. Uh, the first thing we need to look for is, here we go, we need shields. So shield generators, they have a shield delta object. And as you can see, it's not quite positioned right here. So what we need to do is position this to where these two towers are. Okay, so I'm going to move it a little to the left. And then I'm going to move it up a little bit. Okay, so it looks about right. Um, if this building is in the snow, then we would need to know where all the little ice pieces are. Okay, so this is ultimately what I came up with for ice. Uh, the next thing I need to do is position where the fires go. Okay, so you can do this however you want. I'm just kind of messing around here without actually considering what kind of fires these type of buildings actually have. But you would just choose the best fires that you want and kind of get positions for them. I and mean, you can always change which ones go where later. But this gives you a pretty good idea of what it things will look like when it catches on fire and when you have ice patches on it for snow. And also we have our, our little shield generator thing here. What we can do with all these positions for these Delta objects is we can go to edit and we can create a CSV file from all these positions. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and save this CSV file. Okay, and if I go into my project folder and open this, okay, here we can see is all the information so that when you go into age, you can get all the coordinates for each one of these objects and what the ID number is for all of them. So this will make things a lot easier for you when you are adding a new building and you can set up all the fires and snow. Okay, so that concludes this tutorial.